So we started in the summer of 2021, just with the idea of participating in a DRC. And then so it took us like all of September to, to get the team together, get some mechanical engineers to join because we were just electrical engineers at the beginning. What we did was we looked at uh, what kind of uh, engineering programs that we wanted to have in our team. And then we were able to go to uh, those classes and kind of like present our project, tell them what we want to do, what it's about. And then people were like able to uh, apply to the team. And because it's we're not that many engineering students at our school, especially during like the, the year that you can really work on the rover, uh, we were able to like take all of them in that applied. So we we started building a rover already in the fall of 2021. And then uh, as soon as the regulations for the ERC-22 came out, we adapted our role, we adapted the project and uh, we signed up. Uh, the electrical engineers, we did a project together in the semester before, the three of us, but we didn't work with the mechanical engineers or the uh, computer scientists before. We knew a couple of them, but we never worked with them. So that was the first time we, we worked together as a team. I think that the fall semester was, was quite hard because we had to get to know each other. But then uh, during springtime, I think uh, it really showed that we were a great team and we knew how to work together. So that helped a lot. So we started with seven people and then we added two computer scientists in the winter for the ERC 2022. And uh, now we are 15 people and there's four more joining us soon. So we're about 20 people now, more or less. Our like main jobs, I would say, or main studying fields are all engineering or computer science. But we have a lot of people that have uh, experience just outside of their work field, I would say. So we have, for example, someone that's also into politics that knows very well how to coordinate or how to do social media, things like that. We have people that are, are managing websites. So that's knowledge we can use. We also have uh, Nadine. She did the science part for us. She was very interested in the geology stuff. And so she was able to tackle that challenge. We're also trying to add different people now, but at the moment it's uh, mainly an engineering team. So I think the university was not that much into doing such projects, but uh, once we showed initiative, they were definitely very supportive. So the initiative was on our, on our side, but our dean and our school uh, principal was, uh, was very excited about the ideas that we had and supported us a lot. And uh, I think it wouldn't have been possible without. <laughs> it's always a, a big financial burden, but also you need like a project room where you can work, you need materials and tools. And so that's uh, where the school helped us out with a lot. We started with a small bit of funding from the school, but we, we, we very quickly realized that it wouldn't be enough to build an entire rover. And so we, we kind of did two things in parallel. We tried to really think about what are the crucial parts that we need. So for example, maybe we don't have a probing and sampling, but we really need a drivetrain and we need to have a manipulator that can do something. So we focused our budget into those points. And then also as soon as you have like a concept drawn up and you have maybe like a render in a CAD program or something, you can start uh, showing that to sponsors and try to find industry partners that maybe will give you some parts or will uh, give you a cash injection. And that definitely got easier, like the further we went and the more we had to show, it became easier and easier to get funding from, from companies. Like uh, if you have parts that you want from a certain company writing them and usually you're not getting something for free but very often you get like 60% off or 70% off of a part and for the companies it's a great way to support us support students and for us it's a great opportunity to get high quality parts for a low price what i really really loved was like the spirit in the in the where all the teams were with, with all the other guys it was was really fun there was a great great atmosphere there everybody was trying to learn from from the other teams and no one was was hiding their own stuff but everybody was telling them what they did and how they did it and oh well this, this system is great but maybe next year you could try to do that and so we kind of gave tips to each other as well and uh, we went out with all of those people go drinking after the competition often and had a lot of fun and it was really great to to see all of the engineering people all of the people there in general come together. I think the bonus that we had was we didn't really expect to actually go through the qualification and actually go to Poland. So whatever happened, we were already happy to be there. The main thing that influenced us was, first of all, our tasks were moved to, to Saturday or to Friday evening, I think. So we were supposed to do the probing and the navigation task during the night or during the, the late evening. First, we were supposed to do navigation, but when we showed up, we realized that we couldn't see anything with our cameras, like at all. And so we had two 
two computer scientists working on the autonomous navigation all, all semester long. They were unsure if the navigation is going to work or not. And so I kind of gave them the decision to, or them the opportunity to decide if they want to do it today in the when it's dark or tomorrow when it's raining. Because in my opinion, it was not my call to make because they worked on it for half a year. And so they decided to move it to the rain to the next day. And so we only did the, the probing task during the night. That one worked more or less fine. And then for Saturday, we had to go during the rain. The judges didn't want to have us drive during the rain at all at first, but some team convinced them to just go ahead anyway. And so we were able to go and we waterproofed our rover with like garbage bags and uh, everything. It looked uh, quite funky and the, navig the autonomous navigation didn't work so well, but the rover itself worked fairly well, even in a lot of rain and mud. During the maintenance task, uh, we had an issue with our manipulator, like a part one motor didn't start up right. And then because we had got a busy uh, Wi-Fi channel, we weren't able to reboot the manipulator, so we didn't have any connections. And so we just kind of uh, stood there for 20 minutes and the rover couldn't move because we had no connection anymore. But we were able to talk to Marcin and we were able to to try again and second time we, we were able to use a different uh, wi-fi channel and then everything worked worked very well i think for us that was like a great way how the judges kind of helped us but also helped other teams to put like the spirit of the task in front of the letter of the law i guess and really uh have us have fun because we would have been kind of depressed if we were just sitting there because we knew we were able to do a lot of the tasks. But then when, when something's not working, we usually have the approach of uh, get annoyed for it for five minutes, go yell at the wall if you're mad, and then get back to work. <laughs> figure out what's wrong, figure out how to fix it, and try your best. We were we were really there with the, with the approach of making sure we deliver the best that we could. But we were kind of realistic enough to know that it's not going to be perfect but we wanted to do just the best in that mo best that we could in that moment with the, the things that we had and i think we, we achieved that in uh, most of the tasks last year definitely probing and sampling was hardest for us but that was mainly because probing and sampling was kind of an afterthought for us we 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 focused on on the other things first we focused on drivetrain and manipulator and then only once those were finished we started even thinking about probing and especially sampling is quite hard i think um because for once, uh, for one, the the ground is quite hard, so it's hard to shovel up uh, sand. But also, the the task duration is very short, so it's it's really hard to take all of those samples during that time. What made it harder for us was the research. We had to put in a lot of research because we didn't really understand the basics of geology, and so it's hard to kind of put like the the Mars knowledge on top of of knowledge that you don't even have. So you had to read into a lot of material about geology and understand how everything works. So I think that was definitely a big challenge for us. The documentation was really tough to do, but it was also a, uh, a good process for the team itself to figure out what's really important, what are the risks, what are the, the opportunities that you have. It's very hard to put all of the work that you've done into those 25 pages. So that's like kind of the hardest thing to do. The first version we wrote was like 40 or 50 pages almost. And then you, from there you have to start cutting down. But that process also helps yourself and helps the team to, to establish, okay, what, what do we need to put the focus on? and what's important, what's not important. I think the map put a good perspective into our minds. From the beginning, as soon as we got the map, we planned where can we drive, where can we not drive, what's possible and what's not possible for our row. But the, the heights were kind of different than what what we expected, I think. Like it's uh, it's very hard to put a scale on it, on the map, when you get it. What helped a lot was uh, our computer scientists were able to put like a model of our rover into a 3D map of the Mars yard and also simulate driving around and so that helped kind of get the get the scale of things and uh, we were also able to talk to the colleagues from EPFL Explore during the spring semester and they told us a little bit about how the composition of the ground is how hard it is or how soft it is and so that also gets you a bit of an idea on what to expect and so what we did mainly was we ahead of the competition we tried to go to like uh, gravel pits and find surfaces that are somewhat similar to the marsh yard and drive around there get a bit of a feel of how the rover behaves in that environment and so that made it easy to when we were there for preparation on thursday it made it easy to get started really quickly and then adjust uh, what we what we did before all I can I can say for new teams is definitely put in the work for the documentation because when you you know you know from a very early point on that's the thing that's gonna get you to Poland <laughs> or not. 
I mean, it's the it's the deciding factor, right? So uh, all the work you put into the rover is not really worth that much if you don't do the documentation as well. So definitely put the focus on that as a new team, and then also have have the work to back it up what you're writing in your documentation. Obviously, don't just put something in there that's not true. But uh, the documentation can definitely help you identify key components of of what you need to do. I think in the beginning, it's very good to start with a small team. Like I think nine or 10 people is perfect for a first year team. It's not very productive to have uh, a lot of people. Just because it's like when you build a company, you can't start with a hundred people. You have to get your processes right first. And at the beginning, you kind of need to understand all of it. And then as you iterate on your rover, you can start actually putting much more work into a subsystem by its own.